Welcome back to one of my podcasting, Eminem. Now, I haven't really brought him up ever on this program, and it's not that I don't think his music's any good, because hell, I grew up to it. Listen, he's got a lot of good records. He is one of the most foremost rappers there are in the game. Obviously, he's in an age right now where his style of music is very different, and it just he's still doing his records even though once in a while a song or two will actually catch on. But for the most part, I mean, he is like one of those rock acts that, you know, will continue to go and put out albums and will have a cult following that will always follow him and follow along. One thing I learned from a TikTok video, actually, which was very interesting. I didn't realize that the word Stan really came from his video or from his song Stan. That's really what it came from. I never even put those two into together. Just that was something that was fascinating. But as I learned stuff about Eminem on TikTok, even in this day and age, since 1999, since I've heard him, well, then there's also the part of TikTok that wants to cancel. So let's talk about that. He put out a new video and a new song called Tone Deaf. Let's go ahead and get into it and find out what is the whole story. So where does this all come from? Okay. So the cancel campaign on Eminem arrives after a TikTok campaign was started calling for Eminem's cancellation after lyrics from his 2010 single with Rihanna, Love the Way You Lie, resurfaced. So it took 10 years for this damn song to get some kind of controversial comments? Really? I don't know. I've heard that song a million times. I'm tired of that damn song. Who's listening to it? But either which way, according to new hip, hot new hip hop, People are angry at Eminem for the lyrics. If she ever tries to fucking leave again, I'm a tired to the bed and set this house on fire. This is controversial. And I've heard people that are standing for Eminem, old school fans and, and fans that are currently, that do appreciate Eminem's craft. Okay. They are telling them, yeah, this is, this is controversial. Really? Eminem, this is what you're going to complain about. This is the, this is tame compared to some of the other things. And I'm not going to go ahead and come on here and try to defend and start quoting lyrics from other songs. But seriously, there's other places to go with it. And I've heard a lot of other people on TikTok defend Eminem. I'm not here to defend them. I'm just making the point of this is where, you know, I, you know, the whole thing is Eminem is not going to get canceled. He doesn't care. The one thing I don't care for Eminem that he did do was him being political. It, just because it didn't sound right coming out of him. I just felt like any, you know, the, the, the rappers who were trying to get political because they want to get political, it, that doesn't do it for me. It kind of goes away from the from what his normal trait is. But again, there's nobody is, uh, everybody is subjected to criticism. And, you know, he doesn't hold any punches on anybody. So if he wants to go and, you know, criticize, he's going to do it. I just didn't care for it. I just think when he was trying to go ahead and you know attack certain people, it wasn't good. I thought him going after MJK wasn't great, but again, he does disc records. This is what he does. It's part of his. It's part of his mystique. That's what he's always done. So anyway, into the story itself. Tone deaf. The video. He's appearing to address his juvenile naysayers in the song. He says, "Quote." I won't stop even when I hear when my hair turns gray. I'm tone deaf because they won't stop until they cancel me. Read the song's hook. He goes on to jokingly blame his alter ego, Slim Shady, for his most uproarious bar, cementing he will never change his artistry due to public pressure. Supporters who grew up on the MC also came to his defense. Uh, cancel culture targets Eminem. Good luck with that. Pretty sure people have been trying to cancel him since my name is dropped on MTV. That's hilarious for one fan. With another adding, Gen Z trying to cancel Eminem for controversial lyrics? Bro, his music is so old, he's made his music. Leave the man alone. You want to get on him for controversial lyrics, but y'all don't want to say shit about anyone else. What about Takashi 6 9 Y'all need to cancel him. We don't want anybody canceled. I think that just gets a little bit too much. Anyway, young TikTokers excuse me, have taken issue with the several artists' past songs, including Love the Way You Lie, which glorifies toxic relationships and domestic violence. So again, people want to go after him and make a whole deal out of it. You really, people need to relax. I want to see what other people are talking about with this, so I'm going through some of the stories about what the take is about 
the Eminem cancel culture controversy that's going on here? It's gotten to the point where Hot 97, New York's hip hop station, WQHT in New York, uh, they decided to go ahead and wrote, they wrote a blog post to go ahead and talk about it. So they said, rap legend Eminem is known for his bars to say the less. With this new cancel culture rising, Eminem seems to be at the center of the flames as people on TikTok have been debating if M should be canceled due to some of his past rap lyrics. But they didn't put anything more than that. Just put the video. Is anybody going to actually like talk about this? I want to actually read something that where somebody says it. All right, Newsweek gives me a story. Here we go. Despite the seemingly shocking nature of the line that the original TikToker shared in her video, which I don't know who it was, but we'll just leave it out there. Questionable lyrical content had long been a staple of Eminem's discography. The rapper's been regularly boasted about his ability to cross the line in his music since early in his career and has mocked people who have called his music offensive, most notably on his critically acclaimed 2000 album, The Marshall Mathers LP. And that's what goes on. Even though the video originally called Eminem to be canceled appears to have been deleted, many stands, a term that Marshall Mathers coined himself, has become a part of the pop music dialogue and they have come to the rapper's defense while pushback from millennials in supporting Eminem appear to, uh, appear to far outweigh the calls for people seeking to cancel him. Some argue that the rapper has made more offensive music than the Love the Way You Lie. In the song My Name Is, the debut single, the one that brought him on the map. Hey, hi kids, do you like violence? Okay. Other fans have taken the call for cancellation a little more seriously. One TikToker rewrote the lyrics to Dr. Dre's Forgot About Dre from the uh, 2000, uh, the uh, Chronic 2000 uh, album, right? Well, 2001, that's right. God, it's been I remember we're playing that. It features Eminem to criticize Gen Z for not respecting Eminem, although the TikToker addresses the calls to cancel him. She appears to take more issue with the mumble rap style that's more popular than Eminem's mile a minute delivery. And given the ferocity that millennials respond to the seemingly half-hearted attempt to cancel some shady, users on Twitter roast the millennials who grew up with the rapper's music. Despite being the butt of many jokes, Eminem fans are considering the tone-deaf video drop a win. And shady will live to be canceled another day. Now, I want to say this. This is exactly how you handle, handle cancel culture. Okay? The fact that people want to go ahead and attack Eminem this is the level where, you know, you got to ask yourself, I mean, when people make mistakes that are said, right? I understand that part. And there's some people that feel like there has to be an apology made. Well, we've always had people that were felt they needed to go and make an apology. Got that. But then again, if you're, you know, if you listen to people like I used to listen to back in the day on radio called Tom Likas, he always said, don't apologize for anything. You should never have to apologize for anything if you don't do something wrong. Stand behind what you do, which is exactly how I feel, which is true. Out of the eight years, eight and a half years I've been doing this program or doing any podcasting of my own, whether it's my wrestling program, whether it's my media program, or whether it's this program and the 250-odd episodes I've done, I'm not regretting anything I've ever said. Now, for Eminem, for him to go ahead, again, it's like how Howard Stern which is why I've talked about Howard Stern extensively on this program is because I didn't like how he basically, he basically was getting canceled culture himself or he was going to be on the cusp of it. And I didn't like that. Why does Howard Stern have to go ahead and apologize for what he's done? He felt like giving himself a mea culpa, but the truth is it's probably because he had some out underlying effects from a lot of different areas from Hollywood, from probably his wife, from other places that might have caused him to go ahead and change his tune. Plus, when he sold his book, he's like, okay, the new book came out and he's just giving up for everything he's done. So you're going to just go ahead and say, you're just going to try to wrap with a bow and apologize for 30 years of content you've done that might have been sexist, mis misogynistic, you know, whatever. And you think the apology is going to make, I mean, that's the other thing. You think the apology is going to make up for all that? No. That's the win. When the cancel culture comes for you, once you give them the apology, they've won. And when they know they've won, then they're not going to just win the game. They're going to destroy in the win. Okay? It's like, 
it's like a wrestler when I watch wrestling. You know, when a heel wrestler finishes off the opponent as able to go ahead and pin the opponent on the mat for a three count, they don't. They want to keep punishing him. They want to keep punishing him until that wrestler can't wrestle ever again. That's exactly what's happening here. But this that Eminem does right here is the antithesis of what needs to be done for anybody that's in this cancel culture. For my criticisms or my opinions about Eminem, again, I respect what he's done. I respect him in the industry. Again, my only little core with him was just, you know, I think, you know, some of the records he puts out now these days, you know, it's okay. Um, obviously, his better, his more popular, his better raps are behind him. When he was younger and he was just, it was just a bit fresh. And that's nothing against him. It's just that is how rap is. It's just how rock is. Do you know, you know, Eminem is past his prime. He's near 50 years old. Hey, grant him. He's still putting out music, which is what all the major Hall of Fame stars do, okay? If he hasn't become a Hall of Famer in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he should be. There should be no question about that. And he's won his Grammys. He's done his things. And I can respect that. Listen, he's gotten rich. And that's fine. Good for him. For all he's done. The music, Eight Mile was a good movie. I got no problem with it, man. Everything is fine with all that. So when it comes down to it, I like the fact that this guy fought back on cancel culture. And he didn't give it any more than just a diss record. He tyrannized it just like another rapper that would diss him. He dissed right back. That's the way he handled it. No commentary, no kind of like response on social media. Nope. Put out a record. And it'll sell. And it, it'll get some uh, clicks. And that's all he needs. That's all that matters. Yeah, good for him. You're just giving a publicity. You're just feeding into the animal. That's the way you handle it. That's exactly the way you handle it. So I can appreciate what Eminem did, that he has stood up to cancel culture. And this, I hope, Eminem holds as the example, the role model. I know, imagine him. Yes, he is the role model of cancel culture. You brush it off. You push it aside. And, you know, it's a bit of a difference between him and Taylor Swift, which I talked about earlier in a previous when I'm not podcasting episode about Ginny and Georgia and the Netflix show and her getting upset about people criticizing her. Same thing. I can respect where Eminem says, okay, you know what? This is what needs to be done. I'm going to handle it like I handle it. This is it. You are not going to smudge. You are not going to tarnish. You are not going to destroy, right? 22 years of my career doing this after all this happened to me right you know i i had a shit life and a shit uh upbringing and all this stuff and i put it into a movie and i've written about it and i have versed it all over the place and for him to go ahead and do what he did great listen there was a time where he was groundbreaking he was different and he was respected again they always talk about the whole idea of you know white rapper and how many that are out there that are, you know, credible and respected within in the hip hop community? Well, Eminem is one of the best. I don't like using the goat reference, but he is one of the best we've ever had. And he's good. And he deserves to not get canceled. Let let the again, this is where they talk about, you know, bad publicity is good publicity. Any publicity is good publicity. That's how he's gonna handle it. And that's how it should be handled. So good for him. I would just lay out the politics. I just think everybody gets all out, I should get out of politics all together when it comes to entertainers. So that's just my gripe overall. So it's not just him. There, I mean, there's way more people I can talk about than that. But again, it could have been where he was just kind of like encouraged to kind of say something. Maybe it's really his own thing, his really thoughts, opinions. That's fine. But for me, no. Eminem's going to come through as fine. I don't know what people think they're going to be able to do in a social media campaign to knock him out. They're not going to. Let Eminem, you know, go into the sunset with his millions and millions of dollars and all the records that he's done. Eventually, I guess he'll do some licensing publishing deal where he'll sell all his uh, materials out for the highest bidder and he'll make another $100, $200 billion, whatever, $100 million, $200 million, something like that. I don't know. Maybe more, half a billion, something. 
And it doesn't matter. He's laughing his way to the bank. You just put him back in the lexicon. I want to see if tone deaf becomes a charted record. Will it make the Billboard Hot 100? Well, probably not yet because I think it got released, what, Friday? So it's not enough time for this week. But next week, will it chart? Because then we'll find out if enough TikTok people will have said something. Because, again, with a Howard Stern, you have the same kind of scenario, right? People used to listen to him when they hated him because they wanted to know what he was going to say. And people did love him, and they wanted to listen to what he was going to say. This is the same thing with Eminem. He puts out a record. Okay, what is he saying now? And they can like it or not. And I'm not one of those people that I'm complaining about mumble rappers or trap artists or how the music is out there. Honestly, there is quite a bit of rap music I like. Quite a bit. To believe it or not. Now, there's still some artists that keep putting out records that just doesn't do anything for me. Like Lil Uzi Vert doesn't do much for me. Young Boy Never Broke Again. He's okay. And there are others that are out there. Juice World was okay. He was fine. But again, I don't see where people think that Eminem is going to get caught up in all this. And I'm glad that he has still got enough sense to not cave into this shit. And nobody should. All right, I'll leave it there. And I'll talk to you next time.